What's up guys, Rob here from Decoded. If you've been watching my videos for a while, or you've downloaded any of my files from Patreon, you probably already know that I'm a pretty big fan of procedural textures. Procedural? That's not even a word. Procedural textures. I've tried to record this video five times now, I'm leaving that in. So procedural textures are great, they're very versatile, but the problem with them, other than sometimes being hard to pronounce apparently, is that they can take a long time to render. Whereas a texture map is very straightforward for the computer to figure out, a procedural texture takes a lot of computing power, and every time you add another node into the system, you add another chunk of maths for the computer to work out. Now there is one way that you can get the best of both worlds, you can make a procedural texture, and you can have the render speed of a texture map, and that's through baking. Baking basically projects a procedural texture onto a UV map and bakes it out as an image. I get the impression that a lot of beginners are very sort of put off by doing any sort of texture baking. It seems quite intimidating, even for intermediate users, but it's actually pretty straightforward. And it can really bring down your render times. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly the difference it can make and how you do it. So I've got this procedural texture I made here. It's very straightforward. Uh, it's actually only a few nodes, this kind of trippy LSD weird texture. I don't know why you would ever make this. It's just a demonstration. If I go over to the shading menu, you can actually see it's just a handful of nodes. There's a magic texture, a Voronoi, and one's been plugged into the base color and one's been plugged into a bump, the exact same effect. Okay, so let's hit render on this and see how long it's gonna take. Right, so that's now finished rendering and it took about 1 minute 19 seconds. As I said earlier, I have run through this video a few times already before, so I know that that's pretty consistent with other times I've run the render. Obviously, I am using screen recording software at the moment, which will be slowing things down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to slot number 2 and I'm going to close this up. Let's bake out this texture and see how much we can get that render time down. Right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do before you ever bake out a texture is you're going to want to make sure that your object has a UV map. Now, I'm using the Suzanne monkey head here, which is already unwrapped, but any other object, you're going to have to make sure that it has a nice, clean UV unwrap done. Once you've unwrapped it, you're just going to go to the shader menu and you're going to add in a new image texture. So I'm just going to do a search here for image texture, and then we're going to press new, give it a name, I'm going to call this, I don't know, monkey bake did I spell that wrong I did monkey bake I'll, I'll leave everything else at default and just press ok now I'm going to keep this node here selected make sure that's selected that is important and I'm going to go over to the render properties panel I can't pronounce words today for some reason the render properties panel and I'm going to go to this section here where it says bake now if we open this up we get a few settings that we're going to have to change here under the bake type we only want to use the diffuse information. That's the color information. So we're going to select diffuse. And then under influence, what this basically does is it allows you to bake lighting into a material. So you can light something, bake it in, and then you can potentially remove the lights and it would look like the lights are still there. Video games use this all the time. They use bake lighting. We don't want that. So we're going to turn off direct and indirect, but we're going to leave color because we still want the color information. Then once you've done all that, you just need to hit bake. No valid selected objects. Okay, make sure you select an object, then hit bake. And you can see it's now baking. Right, so that's finished baking now. It took a few minutes, and as you can see here, we have a texture map over the, the UV map of our weird trippy texture. And that's automatically in this node here, right? So we can get this node, and we can connect this up to where the other nodes were set up, so we can plug it into the bump map and the base color. Then we can just get rid of these, and we can delete them. And you can see that it's the exact same effect that we had before, only now it's not coming through procedural nodes, it's coming through this image texture. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is 
go to the rendering panel. I've already got another slot set up and I'm going to hit F12 and render that out and see what difference it makes. Right, so that's finished rendering and it was much, much, much faster. Instead of, I think the first one was 1 minute 19 seconds, the second one was 49 seconds. And if I switch between the two, you can see that there's basically no difference in the renders. There's a tiny little difference in the amount of bump, but that's just because of the resolution that I baked the uh, the material as. If I used a higher resolution, the bake would have took a little bit longer the render time would have slightly bumped up as well, but you wouldn't have been able to even tell the difference there. Now, there is one or two word of warnings that I have to give you about big te baking textures out. Um, first of all, you're going to have to make sure that you save the image. This texture file that it's baked here now, you're going to have to go into image save as and save that out. Because if you don't do that, when you close Bender, you're going to lose everything. Secondly, you need to weigh up whether it's worth baking things out. For instance, this render here, if it was just one frame of one thing, I wouldn't bother because the amount of time it took to bake took longer than the amount of time I saved from rendering. But if I was doing an animation where I had lots of frames or if I was doing like a proper render where I had lots of different objects that all had procedural materials, it would definitely be worth baking things out because I would save loads of extra time. So that's just something to think about guys. It's another tool that you can add to your arsenal when you're doing things in Blender. I really hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also make sure you wash your hands. I don't need any of my audience catching the runner.